Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome uh, to our virtual presentation on the Maritimes tours. We will be featuring our fly coach tour as well as our all coach uh, tour. If you would like to ask any questions, please feel free to type it into your chat box at the bottom of your screen. And we will try to get to as many of these questions as we can at the end of the presentation. If we are unable to get to your question, we will send you an email with the answer. I should also mention that these tours are offered every year. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable traveling this year, don't worry, it'll be offered again next year and they're always offered around the same time frame. As Western Canada's premier motor coach touring company, Westworld Tours has been serving Canadians from coast to coast with escorted travel throughout North America and around the world since 2000. Last year, we celebrated our 20th anniversary. We offer quality components to all tours, including modern, comfortable coaches, professional tour directors, experienced, courteous drivers, baggage handling, and excellent accommodations. Our tours include all the sites and attractions important to our clients. We also provide several meals throughout the tour. Thousands of passengers have chosen Westworld Tours' first-class style of motor coach touring, enjoying the great value, security, and stress-free environment, all while making new friendships along the way. We receive a high level of satisfaction from our passenger surveys, and I know our tour directors love seeing familiar faces on the tours. The world has been turned upside down, travel as much or more than any other industry. We have canceled all of our tours until May 31st, and we are continually monitoring the situation. The health and safety of our travelers and staff is our highest priority right now. And we understand that your money you trusted to us uh, may be better used for other things than travel right now. To respect that, we have refunded everyone who booked on the tours that were canceled. We do not feel right issuing future travel credits. After all, it is your money. So should you decide, you should decide when and where you want to travel, not us. So stay safe and we hope to see you traveling with us again soon. So we're gonna talk about the Maritimes Fly and Coach Tour, which is scheduled for August 5th to the 16th of this year. So join us on a 12 day uh, tour of the Maritimes. We'll see the beauty of Peggy's Cove and the Cabot Trail in Nova Scotia. A leisurely ferry crossing to PEI means a visit to Anne of Green Gables house and stopping for a delicious PEI lobster dinner. Travel across Confederation Bridge at almost 13 kilometers long, it's the longest bridge in the world crossing ice covered water. In New Brunswick, visit picturesque seaside town of St. Andrews by the sea, shop, take a stroll or explore the wildlife. Drive across the ocean floor to Minister's Island to the historic Van Horn Estate. This is a jam packed tour with adventure. Now I'll let Coral walk us through the tour. <laughs> And before she uh, does that, I will let, introduce Coral, one of our senior tour directors. Hello, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here with you this evening uh, in our new world. I uh, can't see you and look out at all your faces uh, tonight, but I'm so happy to have you all here. As Leanne said, my name is Coral, Coral Carpenter Romanchuk now, and uh, some of you I'm sure that are with us this evening, um, I have traveled with some of you probably many times and I'm sure there's some of you here that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting before. So uh, it truly is my pleasure uh, to welcome you all uh, tonight to our presentation. I actually very soon will be at my personal 20th anniversary with Westworld Tours. That's coming up on uh, April 10th and it's been my pleasure to represent Westworld for these past 20 years. Uh, I had to stop and count today how many tours I've done myself out to the Maritimes and the East Coast, and I'm at 18 uh, right now. So definitely has some stories to tell and lots of things I look forward to telling you this evening about our Maritimes tours. We actually have two Maritime tours that we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, some of the information I'm going to sort of combine into one, some things I'll be sharing with you uh, individually. The first tour that uh, we're talking about is our fly coach tour to the east coast and this of course is an august tour which uh, is actually kind of a, a fun point in itself that the fly coach tour is really a summer tour in early to mid-august 
and our all coach tour focuses more on the fall, getting into the fall colors, uh, September, October, that sort of thing. But the fly coach tour that we're looking at first is just a nice length, uh, 12 day tour. Uh, we're flying directly into the city of Halifax uh, on the tour for a three night stay in Halifax. Uh, there's so much uh, to see and do in Halifax. Uh, typically we stay right downtown in Halifax and uh, it's such a beautiful city. It's actually among my favorite cities uh, in Canada for sure. Um, one of the sites that we see is actually really close uh, to where we stay and that is the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. That's the shot that we're looking at in this very first slide tonight, uh, just over on the left hand side of your screen. Uh, the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic really just shows you, uh, you know, a, a really good glimpse into maritime life. There's actually over 30,000 artifacts featured in the museum and around 70 small craft inside. Uh, we're going to elaborate a bit on the Maritime Museum when we get into the All Coach presentation. There's a few more things I want to tell you about that. But on the right hand side of your screen, we're looking at a couple more special places as well. Uh, the picture up at the top on the right hand side is known for being uh, one of the most photographed and one of the most beautiful villages in all of our beautiful country. And that is the village of Peggy's Cove. Um, of course, founded on the fishing industry. And certainly today, uh, it has been tourism for several years that has been the mainstay of the local economy. And it really is a, as pretty as a picture, as they say. So that's actually the village of Peggy's Cove that you're looking at there. And just below it, that famous uh, lighthouse. Uh, the famous lighthouse at Peggy's Cove, well, at one time, it actually housed the uh, post office until finally, uh, and I can remember that, but uh, finally the quarters were just too cramped inside. They had to move it into the gift shop. Uh, but that lighthouse opened back in the year 1915. So as guides, I think many of us love uh, fun facts. Definitely gonna share some fun facts with you tonight, uh, including the pictures in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. That is a gorgeous town. And there are a few things on our fly coach tour that are actually unique specifically to this tour that we do not do on the all coach tour. And one of them is the beautiful town of Lunenburg. And many of the buildings in Lunenburg, about 70% in fact, are originals dating back to the 1880s timeframe. So that wooden uh, colonial style architecture. Uh, in fact, Lunenburg is so historical and so beautiful. It is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site, not just a building or two, but the whole town itself and also founded on the fishing industry. So during our three night stay in Halifax, we're gonna go out for a visit to Peggy's Cove. It's only less than an hour's drive from the city. And uh, we're gonna take a day trip out to Lunenburg where we'll actually have a, a guided walking tour for you to enjoy of uh, beautiful Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. There we go. Uh, this is actually uh, uh, two more sites that you're looking at on uh, this screen that are specific to our fly coach tour. So as I say, it's kind of fun that there are some things that we do, particularly just on our August tour uh, to the East Coast. One on the left hand side of the screen is the Fortress of Lewisburg. And on the right hand side of the screen is the Miners Museum in uh, Glass Bay. Uh, the Fortress of Lewisburg, first of all, on uh, the left hand side, uh, has been uh, carefully and lovingly restored to its appearance when it was uh, when it was first developed by the French back in the 1700s. Specifically, the way it looks today is how it would have looked in 1744. And the Fortress of Lunis, Lunenburg, excuse me, is actually uh, one of the largest national historic sites uh, in Canada. So we have a chance to tour all through uh, the Fortress of Lewisburg with the costumed interpreters. And uh, it really is an amazing place. Uh, speaking of amazing places, is learning about the history of the coal mining industry in Nova Scotia. And that is a huge part of their story. So the Coal Miners Museum uh, pays tribute to uh, the legacy of the uh, the coal mining industry in the province. And also, I'm sure many of you uh, that are joining us tonight are familiar with the, uh, the famous uh, choir group, the Men of the Deep. And this is actually where they're based out of is the Miners Museum in Glass Bay, Nova Scotia. All 
All right. Um, we're going to also elaborate on this slide a little bit more as we get into the All Coach Tour as well. But uh, I do want to make mention of uh, the stunning scenery that you're seeing. We've got some some more really great pictures coming up of this of this rather. So I'll just touch on this briefly. Uh, what you're looking at is considered to be one of the most scenic highways in Canada. It is known as the Cabot Trail. And it's actually just shy of 300 kilometers long. And I would definitely, for my many trips out to the East Coast, I would list our day journey on the Cabot Trail as one of the highlight days of this whole tour. So we'll talk more about that. And then I'll so something else that we see on Cape Breton Island, and we actually do it the same day that we do the Cabot Trail first thing in the morning, and that is the Alexander Graham Bell Museum. Uh, just to elaborate a little bit more on Alexander Graham Bell. I think all of us uh, associate Alexander Graham Bell with the telephone. You know, that's what he was the most famous for in all of his inventions, but he was nothing short of genius. Uh, his was a brilliant mind. He was always thinking, always creating. And uh, they said that with Alexander Graham Bell, ideas were as prolific as the leaves on a tree, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing that was really cool about Alexander Graham Bell was the beautiful story of his relationship with his wife. Uh, Mabel. Uh, she was deaf from birth and he was uh, particularly proud of uh, the work that he did uh, communicating uh, with the deaf. And uh, so, yeah, um, the hydrofoil is actually another of his inventions. And that's what you're looking at in the top right hand corner of the screen. So we do tour the Alexander Graham Bell Museum, which is located in the beautiful town of Bedeck on Cape Breton Island. Um, so from Nova Scotia, we journey over, <clears throat> excuse me, we journey over to Prince Edward Island and uh, we take the ferry going across. It's about 75 minutes, that ferry crossing from Picto, Nova Scotia, over to uh, beautiful Prince Edward Island. Uh, if you're not familiar with the town of Picto, maybe you never heard of it before, uh, Picto is actually famous for a resident that came from there back in its early days. Anybody joining us tonight ever been up to uh, Dawson City, Yukon or uh, Dawson Creek, BC? There's actually a very close connection to Picto, Nova Scotia. And I always like sharing this fun fact uh, with my groups because I love history. A man by the name of George Mercer Dawson uh, came from Picto, Nova Scotia. Uh, of course, both Dawson City and Dawson Creek, uh, named for that uh, brilliant uh, geologist and scientist. So. So we cross uh, over Northumberland Strait uh, by ferry over to uh, beautiful Prince Edward Island. Uh, the picture in the top right hand corner of your screen is just the classic picture of maritime scenery it just uh, shows you uh, just the beauty of East Coast. Uh, I could talk about that all evening, but uh, you really can't say enough about the pretty scenery. Prince Edward Island is uh, is famous for its beauty. It really is. I remember uh, uh, many years ago, the first time I went to uh, to Prince Edward Island, I, I still remember calling home and telling my family, I said, it looks like somebody, uh, you know, groomed the cows in the fields. Like everything is so, so perfect here. Uh, it really looks like a painting. And uh, the islanders are, uh, are very, very proud of their Island Beauty. Some of you might know this, but uh, they say if you're not from Prince Edward Island, you are from away. And uh, it takes a long, long time to ever really be, uh, you know, fully accepted uh, as an actual Islander. Kind of a fun story about that red soil. And uh, you can see that between the rows of uh, the famous potatoes uh, in PEI on uh, that uh, that shot there in the middle of your, uh, your right hand uh, screen there. Uh, you know, there's lots of different theories about uh, why Prince Edward Island has that uh, red soil. Some people say it's as simple as iron oxide in the soil. Uh, I've kind of always liked another story, and I've learned this from locals uh, on PEI. They say that uh, when God created the world, he finished uh, his work. And uh, finally, when it was all completed, he looked down at Prince Edward Island and realized it was just so perfect. And he blushed and it turned the soil red. So <laughs> that's one theory about the red soil in PEI. Uh, below the picture of the red soil, you're looking at uh, a little house known as Anna Green Gables Cottage. And the photo to the left of that uh, is looking inside Anne's bedroom. Well, I'm sure there's lots of you that are joining us tonight that are familiar with the Anne books. Probably the most famous of them all was the first book, that loose 
Maude Montgomery uh, wrote uh, about Anne of Green Gables. Kind of an interesting thing about that. Uh, I've, uh, I've heard it said that uh, Lucy Maude Montgomery said that she felt every time someone asked her if Anne was a real person, she said she felt she was doing her a great disservice by admitting that she was actually a fictitious character. But there's something about Anne Green Gables that just makes her feel like she really did live. Uh, on the, uh, the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, uh, gosh, I would call this another one of the highlights of your tour out to the East Coast. Uh, and that is the uh, seafood feast, the lobster feast that we go to in uh, Prince Edward Island. Uh, don't be alarmed. Just looking at that picture earlier going, geez, that looks a little bit intimidating, uh, that picture. Uh, but don't be alarmed when we go uh, for our lobster feast in Prince Edward Island. The uh, lobster is already open for you. If you're uh, a, a prairie person like me, you don't have to uh, worry about trying to figure out how to open up your lobster that's all done for you. Uh, the mussels, oh my gosh, the seafood chowder, of course the famous uh, potatoes and EI, it's all so good. And it's really all about the butter. You just have to get over it that night and just accept that you're gonna put butter on everything and, uh, and just enjoy it. <laughs> so it's so much fun and PEI is, is gorgeous, you'll, you'll love it. Um, when we depart um, from beautiful Prince Edward Island, we don't leave again by ferry. We do cross Northumberland Strait, but we leave by bridge uh, this time. And we are going to talk a little bit about uh, Confederation Bridge uh, in a short while, but uh, we'll get to that in a bit when we talk about the uh, All Coach Tour. Uh, what you're looking at here, though, are sites in uh, in the lovely province of New Brunswick. I sometimes think that New Brunswick gets a little bit overshadowed because we all talk about how beautiful Prince Edward Island is. And I love Nova Scotia for its wild, rugged beauty. Uh, but, you know, some of my favorite stops are actually in um, the lovely province of New Brunswick. Up there in the left hand corner, though, it's a bit of a touristy stop. But hey, you got to do it. Uh, it's in Moncton. And that is the famous magnetic hill. Well, whether there's really magnets in the hill or whether it's an optical illusion, it doesn't really matter because it's really fun. And uh, generally, uh, my group and I are saying to our driver, do it again, do it again. And uh, yeah, so we do the magnetic hill a couple of times just so you can experience the bizarre phenomenon where the, uh, our driver puts our coach in, uh, in neutral and we seemingly back up the hill. So. So it's kind of fun. Uh, in the center of the screen, uh, that gentleman who is uh, looking out over the ocean, if you can see him between the jaws of that, uh, or the mandibles rather, of that uh, giant lobster, his name is Salty. And uh, the town of Shediac, New Brunswick, is uh, famous for being the lobster capital of the world. Also famous for its uh, resort atmosphere, beautiful beaches, uh, and warm water off the coast uh, in Shediac, New Brunswick. It's also a fantastic place to do a group picture and uh, many years that we do a trip out to the East Coast, this is our spot. Maybe you can see by the lobsters mandibles, there's kind of steps leading up. So it's a great place to, uh, to line up a tour group and do a group picture. And uh, I saved the best for last. Uh, we have pictures of this coming up in the all coach portion of the tour. Uh, but there's three shots on your screen right now of what is actually one of my favorite attractions in all the maritime provinces. And that's a place known as the Hopewell Rocks. And that is located uh, not too far from the city of Moncton actually on the Bay of Fundy. Uh, where what is called a boar tide uh, affects the uh, the rocks here. They're nicknamed the flower pot rocks. If you use your imagination a little bit, they kind of look like upside down uh, flower pots. And uh, these tremendous boar tides come in, uh, famous for being uh, some of the, actually not some of it, the highest tides in the world and create these, uh, these rock formations. So maybe we'll elaborate on that one a little bit more uh, in our all coach portion. There's so much I, uh, I love to share about that. So. Um, I was saying that on our uh, our fly coach tour, we get to do some things that are specific to the fly coach tour. Um, and you're looking at some shots here again as well now. On the uh, left-hand side of uh, the screen, uh, the Jolly Breeze Tall Ship. You get to do a tall ship tour. It's a three and a half hour tour. So how neat is that, that uh, you get to do a, a tall ship ride uh, during your, uh, your stay in the East Coast? Uh, very, very good chance. Uh, you will see whales, uh, possible to see Mankey, possible to see Finback. Uh, very good possibility 
of seeing a hump back uh, whales on the uh, tall ship cruise. Maybe even white-sided dolphins if you're lucky, porpoises, uh, bald eagles. So yeah, uh, just a, a beautiful chance to see some of the wildlife and the, the scenic landscape as well too. So uh, that's the Jolly Breeze uh, tall ship tour. And then in the top left hand, excuse me, the top right hand corner of uh, your screen, you're looking at uh, the Van Horn estate. Uh, St. Andrews by the Sea that we visit here is famous for its incredible, it's actually another UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site. Uh, incredibly scenic and incredibly beautiful with that, uh, that architecture and uh, maritime scenery. Uh, William Van Horn, uh, many of you I'm sure know that name because he was the president of the Canadian Pacific Railway. Uh, probably goes without saying a very wealthy man, uh, passed away, I wanna say, I believe it was 1915, but that is his mansion um, on Minister's Island, uh, just just, uh, just off the coast of um, the beautiful town of St. Andrews by the Sea. So we journey over to Minister's Island. And if you can see the picture on the center of the right hand side of the screen, this is actually <clears throat> Excuse me, this is actually a really cool experience. Uh, less, a less than a kilometer long, but it is actually um, a gravel bar that at low tide it is possible for vehicles, even motor coaches too, to drive from Minister's Island uh, over to uh, to where the Van Horn Estate is uh, is situated. And they say that Minister's Island already by the early 1900s was a pretty major uh, tour attraction. So known for its, uh, its beauty and of course the very elaborate estate that uh, William Van Horn had there as well. So very historical and very beautiful as well. And then uh, I believe this is one of our last slides, I think, of the uh, fly coach tour. And then shortly we'll get into talking a little bit more about the uh, the all coach tour. Uh, this is the, uh, I believe, I want to say this is actually, I'm sure it's the oldest city in uh, Canada, if memory serves me correctly. And that is St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, again, some pretty fabulous architecture. It's fun just to drive around. These old homes are just eye candy uh, driving around uh, St. John. Uh, we often in, uh, are able to stay right down near the waterfront. Of course, uh, St. John has for many years in the past been a major cruise ship port. Uh, the top left-hand corner of the screen, you're looking at just a pretty little restaurants. And gosh, I've sat out there myself. There's nice little patios where you can sit and just enjoy the meal and uh, enjoy the waterfront just across from you. Um, now, the, uh, the St. John River is pretty fascinating. And uh, something that happens on the St. John River in uh, St. John, New Brunswick is something called the Reversing Falls. Now, it's not technically a waterfall at all. It is actually a series of rapids, but because of these bore tides that I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, you have this incredible amount of water rushing up the St. John River and then changes direction and comes back down again. So it's not technically a Reversing Falls, but that's the appearance of it. And it's really, really interesting. And I feel like, I never do it, you know, proper justice to really explain to you, uh, to really explain to my groups the phenomenon of exactly how it works and why it happens. But uh, it's pretty incredible. There's a couple of different overlooks, an upper and a lower overlook for the reversing falls. And uh, of course, we stop at both of those and uh, enjoy a stay in St. John, New Brunswick. Thanks, Coral. Uh, so now we'll jump into the all coach tour. Here we see seven provinces and five states on this cross-country tour through the Canadian Maritimes, Appalachian Mountains, and Niagara Falls region. We'll go on the Rideau Canal um, cruise, Cannon Mountain Tramway, and the Wisconsin Dells boat tour. <clears throat> Experience the illusion of Magnetic Hill and the wonder of reversing falls uh, that Coral was just talking about. We take in some history at the Maritime Museum and grave sites and the Spring Hill Miners Museum. We'll go on tours of Montreal, Quebec City, Charlottetown, PEI, Halifax, Ottawa, Niagara Falls, and Niagara on the Lake. What an unforgettable experience. And this tour runs uh, in September 12th to the October 6th. So it's a 25 day tour. 
All right. Um, I, it is really noteworthy, everyone, just to mention, especially because I know there are some of you who are uh, with us tonight for a presentation who are uh, not in Saskatchewan right now. Uh, it's really noteworthy that, you know, something you could think about for doing for the All Coach Tour is flying into the city of Winnipeg and uh, joining us there. You know, uh, it would be an option even to, say, fly into Regina and fly home from Winnipeg at the end or vice versa, something like that. So uh, that's a, a noteworthy noteworthy thing to keep in mind. Another noteworthy thing to keep in mind, and this is something that I have for many years uh, told our guests with Westworld that I think is a, a fantastic feature of this tour. And that is the fact that Leanne just uh, mentioned this as well, that we have several um, local tours and uh, no one really gives you perspective like a local guide does in uh, any of our locations. I mean, they know not just the facts and the information, but they know the stories and they really give you a feel for the place, whether it's beautiful Quebec City, or whether it's Prince Edward Island, or whether it's Niagara Falls, or whatever it is, they really give you that unique perspective that only a local person can do. And uh, we have, I believe it's six uh, step on guides join us in destinations on our fly coach tour, which is, uh, which is really awesome, I think, excuse me, our all coach tour rather. Uh, speaking of all coach, this is a pretty long tour. But you know, I really, really love this tour. I've guided this tour many times. And uh, I think for a lot of Western Canadians, one of the you know great features of this tour is literally just sitting back in a seat and just watching the scenery go by and seeing our beautiful country. Uh, you just see so much uh, on this trip, just incredible diverse uh, scenery. I, I always fear that it sounds a bit cliche when I say this, but it's really not. It's just so true. Um, it's the people you share the trip with. And I know that probably everybody who's listening tonight that's traveled with us and done group tours uh, can really understand what I'm saying and I hope really agree with me. Um, that's such a great shot that we have up on the screen right now too. Uh, and that really is a lot what it looks like. It's just that camaraderie, you know, and we say it all the time, but it's really true. It's that fun that we share along the way. So it is the idea of sitting back and relaxing um, and having worry-free travel you know, just taking everything in and enjoying and not having to figure out where you're staying and what you're going to see and not getting lost and, uh, and all those sorts of things. But a huge part of it is the people that you share the experience with. And honestly, it is one of the reasons I love my job so much. And one of the reasons why I've always repeated that old quote, a stranger is just a friend you haven't met yet. Heard that many, many years ago. And it's just as true today as it always was. Well, there's lots of time on that journey as we head east on the All Coach Tour. It takes a few days <laughs> uh, to get uh, all the way out to Ottawa uh, when you're leaving from the prairies. But there's a lot of great stops along the way. As I was saying, there's plenty of time uh, for our travelers just to enjoy each other's company, get to know each other, maybe even play some games, listen to some music, have some fun, uh, but some great stops along the way too. One of those in the top right-hand corner, it is a really lovely city. I really do like Winnipeg a lot. And uh, we uh, we overnight in uh, in Winnipeg. So that's what you're looking at uh, in the uh, top right hand corner of the screen. As I was saying, that's a thought, you know, flying into Winnipeg. Hey, maybe even take a day or two there to do some uh, some exploring in Winnipeg. Um, on the uh, left hand uh, side of the screen in the top corner, this is a beautiful spot. And that is just outside of Thunder Bay, uh, Ontario. Uh, that is a uh, that beautiful Kakabeka waterfalls is really, really impressive. So about a 20 minute drive only outside of Thunder Bay, Ontario. So of course we make a stop at Kakabeka. Um, also, uh, since we're on the topic of Thunder Bay, uh, also just outside of Thunder Bay, as we're leaving and heading uh, towards um, Sault Ste. Marie, there's a very special stop that we make, and that is a monument. Uh, indeed, it is a beautiful fitting memorial to what I think personally, or whom I think personally rather, is one of our great 
heroes uh, of us as Canadians, and that was Terry Fox. Uh, unfortunately, Terry Fox was forced to abandon his run just outside of, uh, of Thunder Bay. <clears throat> but there was a really lovely memorial built as a tribute to him. And uh, it's, uh, it's really, really special with Terry Fox kind of looking out over Lake Superior, as you can see in the background. So we stop and pay our respects at uh, the Terry Fox Memorial. And then in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, well, that's the scenery along the way. And that's exactly what it looks like. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. By the time we get to Ottawa, usually the group are saying, please no more rocks and trees and water for a few days. Because <laughs> uh, that's what you're looking at but uh but it is absolutely gorgeous and uh, that is the drive around lake superior as we continue our journey east on the all coach tour until we arrive in the first major city of our tour our nation's capital this is a really lovely city uh sometimes uh, my groups tease me and say coral everything can't be your favorite uh, but uh, uh again ottawa is one of my favorite cities uh in uh in canada it truly is and on our all coach tour in the 25 day tour we have has several two night stays at various locations, which helps a lot on a long tour. And uh, one of those two night stays is in the beautiful city of, uh, of Ottawa. So yeah, so the Parliament buildings, um, the bottom right hand corner of the screen, uh, you can see the uh, the Rideau River with the Parliament buildings uh, in the background. So yeah, that's a really beautiful photo opportunity to see that uh, in uh, in Ottawa. You know, Ottawa was really considered a backwoods borough uh, back in its early days. Uh, the word Ottawa from the Algonquin language uh, meant traders uh, and uh, from the trading that was going on, of course, and uh, it was essentially because it was a backwoods borough, kind of out of the spotlight that Queen Victoria chose it to be our uh, nation's capital, not Montreal uh, or somewhere else. So kind of interesting. But uh, in any case, uh, another of the really uh, special things that we see in Ottawa, in fact, we go for a boat ride and that is the Rideau Canal. And you're looking at that in the uh, center picture on the right hand side of the screen, the, the uh, Rideau Canal. Okay, uh, our next stop the city of Montreal. We do not overnight in Montreal, but we have a fantastic tour here. Uh, well, personally, I think, uh, you know, one of the joys of travel is uh, learning about the places that we see, things we do. I know it's one of the reasons I love to travel so much in my professional and also in my personal life and certainly hope to <laughs> again soon, <laughs> sooner rather than later. Um, but another one of the reasons I love traveling is experiencing places through their, their food and drink as well too. And uh, one of the things that uh, Montreal is famous for is that smoked meat. So it's fun to go for a lunch of some uh, famous uh, Montreal smoked meat while we're in the city. I always suggest that to my groups and I'm sure all of our guides do. Uh, and then we have a really lovely tour of uh, Montreal Montreal. So the lower shots there, you're looking at uh, just, uh, you know, that fantastic uh, architecture out east, uh, of course, horse and carriage rides uh, in downtown as well, too. Uh, the top left hand corner of the screen, you're looking at the, uh, at the profile of the city, uh, looking out over the uh, skyscrapers. Uh, of course, uh, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver are three largest cities in the country. Did you know, I'm sure many of you did, Montreal is actually on an island, uh, the island of, uh, of Montreal. And uh, uh, that is the view from the top of Mount Royal, 764 feet tall that you're looking at uh, in that shot there. Eh, out west, we wouldn't consider that a mountain, but uh, they do out east. So we, uh, we give that to them. We uh, don't say anything. Uh, and in the top right hand corner of the screen, uh, St. Joseph Oratory. So this is something we see you get to take a picture of as well uh, during the Montreal city tour. It is uh, really amazing. It's a, it's a shrine and a Basilica. Uh, incredible how the devout Catholics actually stop to pray on every step on the way up uh, the Basilica. It's always impressed me. Um, one of my favorite places uh, to in, on this whole tour, and it's not just me, uh, every year I've guided the all coach tour, many of the group feel the same way as me, and that is the city of uh, Quebec. Uh, Quebec City is absolutely stunningly beautiful. It really feels like you're being transported into another time in history, walking on those, uh, you know, those cobblestones. Uh, that's a really great shot in the lower left hand 
corner of the screen that Leanne has included for us there, uh, looking up towards the Chateau Frontenac. It's just so lovely strolling among those uh, those buildings with the street musicians and you know poking your nose into shops and you know stopping for lunch. Uh, you can see that funicular as well uh, that goes from the top to the bottom uh, of the uh, the wall. You can see that at the back of that lower shot there. Um, yeah, it's uh, just a nominal fee, two or three bucks to ride that funicular, save you uh, over a hundred stairs, <laughs> uh, unless you want to get some exercise there. But uh, it was the only walled city north of Mexico. So, so historical and so, so beautiful. Uh, you're looking at a good shot of the Chateau Frontenac uh, on the uh, upper right hand screen. Uh, two of the gates are, uh, excuse me, I feel like I got my number wrong. It's uh, two or three of the gates, rather, excuse me, uh, that still stand uh, today. Uh, and uh, you're looking at one of them on the, uh, the lower right, lower left hand corner. Forgive me, I just forgot how many gates still remain i know there's two uh that uh, that are gone but uh, but it was a walled city it was a fortified city nonetheless uh for me uh because i love history one of the really interesting stories we hear about during our city tour in uh, quebec is what happened in the plains of abraham uh in a battle that lasted less than 30 minutes between generals wolf and montcalm so incredibly historical uh Another one of the fun things that we do, uh, of course, is a dinner at a sugar shack. And uh, we have a great picture up for you here of the uh, the rolling of the taffy in the snow. And uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of finesse uh, getting used to rolling your uh, taffy in the snow. I usually end up with mine in my hair, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's usually live music out there at the Sugar Shack, and it's just a great time and a fun meal with uh, traditional French cuisine, that amazing pea soup and the pork rinds and the tortier pie. I love that. So, so good. And in the center screen, um, that is a Saint Anne de Beaupre, that is a famous Catholic shrine uh, in Quebec and uh, famous for its uh, miracles that have taken place there. It's out in the countryside, so we do a beautiful drive outside of the city and uh, take a drive around the Isle of Orleans and, uh, you know, maybe stop at a fruit stand and uh, see the Catholic shrine of Saint Anne de Beaupre. That is a super fun day uh, during our stay in Quebec City. Uh, moving on back out to east again. So we're really going in a different direction on the uh, all coach tour that we were going on the uh, the fly coach tour. So now we're heading into New Brunswick uh, as we're coming from uh, from Quebec. Um, one of the things that Quebec is known for is its wood carvers. And there's a town that we stop in, which is really, I guess you could call it the epicenter of the wood carving tradition in Quebec called saint jean port -Joli, uh, founded back in 1721. One. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, kind of a fun shot uh, up at the top there of a couple of uh, wood carvings, but it's a fun place to bring home a locally made souvenir actually on the trip as well. So uh, looking uh, below it at the shot of the, uh, the St. John River, it's so pretty. Again, you just can't say enough about the scenery uh, in, uh, in the East Coast. It's so lovely. And of course, the covered bridges uh, as well, too. That is the world's longest covered bridge on the left-hand side of the screen in Heartland, New Brunswick at 1,282 feet long. And of course, we uh, always ask our driver to drop us off. So anybody who wants to, at least has a chance to walk across the world's longest uh, covered bridge. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a footpath on the side and then vehicle traffic takes turns from each direction going back and forth. Uh, some of you might have heard this before, but just uh, just quickly, uh, the reasons they were covered bridges, well, they call them kissing bridges, of course, uh, but the idea was that it kind of looked like a barn. So back in the early days, it would actually fee, uh, excuse me, ease the fears of animals crossing over the water and, you know, kind of giving the impression they were in a barn. Um, and also covering a bridge would drastically increase the lifespan of the timbers inside. So hence the beautiful covered bridges in the East Coast. Okay, we were uh, looking at a slide similar to this earlier when we were talking about our fly coach tour. So again, here you have some fantastic shots of the Hopa rocks. 
I've always said, uh, Joel, because my groups, uh, when I've guided this tour, you know, I wish we could stay here, you know, for like six hours so that we could experience uh, the tide coming in. It would be incredible to see the Hopla rocks at high tide when the water is not cr quite right up to those trees, but uh, but just about. Um, and then at low tide, it's really awesome because when we're there at low tide, we actually can walk on the ocean floor. So that's a really special uh, opportunity to have the uh, opportunity to walk on the ocean floor. Uh, yeah, you know, they say that unofficially, and this is totally unofficial, that the highest tides ever recorded uh, here at the Hopo Rocks were 52 feet. Uh, routinely, they're in the high 30s and uh, definitely into the uh, into the 40s. So famous for being the highest tides uh, in the world. Really incredible. Uh, and again, that's uh, not too far from Moncton, uh, New Brunswick, the Hopewell Rocks and the Hopewell Cape. Uh, we're looking at Salty and the world's largest lobster again in Shediac. And just above it, uh, uh, in the uh, right-hand corner of the screen, you're looking at an architectural wonder. Uh, opened back in 1997, it is 12.9 kilometers long, and that is the incredible Confederation Bridge. It is a wonder. It really, really is uh, an architectural marvel. And I have found that uh, so often when I have guided this tour, people, often, often men, but sometimes ladies too, uh, will list this as one of their highlights of the entire trip to the East Coast is actually seeing and driving over Confederation Bridge. Uh, I've been over it just once in a private vehicle. Uh, almost every time I've been on it has been in a motor coach. The great thing about being in a motor coach is that you can actually see the sides are high enough that uh, if you're going over in a private car, you can't see over the sides. But in a motor coach, you can see everything. So it's so fantastic. Uh, you know, we can have people take pictures uh, as they're driving as we're driving over and come up to the front one at a time and take a quick picture take several minutes to get across it um of course uh, the bridge is actually curved to help eliminate problems with driver inattention uh going in a straight line for 12.9 kilometers and i say hey if you're from the prairies what's wrong with driving 12.9 kilometers uh straight so <laughs> apparently it's uh, it's an issue so <laughs> There's that uh, famous red soil again we were talking about in uh, Prince Edward Island and uh, just talking about how gorgeous uh, Prince Edward Island is. A uh, great shot of the lobster traps actually uh, below the, uh, the field of uh, the crop of potatoes there. So actually, you know, another thing that's a lot of fun, I think, and really, really interesting for our groups being out, uh, you know, most people being from out west, of course, is uh, having a demonstration and an explanation by our local guide of how those lobster traps actually work as well, too. So again, and there's uh, Anna Green Gables Cottage and uh, downtown Charlottetown we're looking at. And uh, oh my, I do believe that is uh, Leanne and I dressed up as <laughs> Anna Green Gables. And uh, you too will have the opportunity to do that if you wish to. That is part of uh, any proper visit to PEI. And, and I've seen guys do this too. And it's hilarious to have the men with their beards uh, dressed up as Anna Green Gables. They don't dress you up as Gilbert, they dress you up as, as Anne, they do. So, so that's an opportunity. And uh, that's another great shot of uh, our group in the top right hand corner enjoying that lobster feast uh, in New Glasgow, just a little ways out of Charlottetown. So, so good. Um, what you're looking at here, everyone, is uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, it's a causeway. Uh, so back in uh, Nova Scotia now, we talked about that 75-minute uh, ferry crossing already. Uh, so I'll just touch briefly on the left-hand side of your screen. It's called Canso Causeway. And Canso Causeway is actually a rock fill causeway. Uh, memory serves me. I want to say it opened in 1955. You don't have to remember. It's okay. Just, just a fun fact. Uh, when this causeway was made to uh, connect uh, the mainland of Nova Scotia, the beautiful Cape Breton Island and Cape Breton Island is absolutely lovely of course famous for the Cabot Trail famous for all of the amazing musicians uh, that come out of Cape Breton Island as well so yeah that's um, Port Hastings you're looking at Port Hastings Port Hawkesbury area is a part of Nova Scotia where you cross over this Cancel Causeway and then you're on Cape Breton Island. Okay 
And uh, here we have uh, some more shots of uh, the Cabot Trail. That's another shot from the outside this time in the top right hand corner of your screen of the uh, fantastic Alexander Graham Bell Museum. And the other shots, well, now these ones really show you uh, how the highway just kind of clings to the edge of the cliff and just kind of winds, uh, winds and winds around. Of course, there are so many opportunities for photo stops on the Cabot Trail. It usually reaches a point where finally people are saying, you know what, I'm too tired, I can't get off anymore. Uh, but we give you lots of opportunities uh, to get those encouraged incredible shots. Um, we, drive, uh, we drive around the Gulf of St. Lawrence and then finally in the afternoon, um, well depending where you, where you go of course, because uh, it is about 300 kilometers, the Cabot Trail, you're on the Atlantic Ocean side. Uh, so you, you really get an incredible experience uh, driving around the Cabot Trail. And uh, we even do a picnic lunch. Uh, it's early fall, so usually we, uh, we have uh, really good weather. I, not every single year I've done it, I haven't, but most years I have really good weather during the Cabot Trail and it's fun to do a, a picnic lunch and of course you must have an opportunity to dip your feet in the Atlantic Ocean and that's one of our stops as well so that is uh, definitely one of the highlight days of most people's tour to the east coast is uh, the Cabot Trail. Back on the mainland of Nova Scotia uh, here we are back in the city of Halifax that uh, we pretty much began our presentation with uh, this evening. Of course Halifax and Dartmouth are just across the uh, the water from each other, very short distance, connected by uh, two big bridges. Uh, we're looking again at uh, shots of Peggy's Cove down at the bottom. Um, you know, I just realized one thing I didn't tell you earlier about uh, Lunenburg talking about that. I'm thinking of it looking at the ship in the right hand corner of the screen. Uh, Lunenburg is actually the home of the Blue Nose, too. We all know uh, the Blue Nose, too, the uh, famous ship on the dime. Uh, and then um, Halifax actually has some really sad history as well, too, I hate to say, but it's true and it's interesting. And one of those things is actually uh, what we learn about at the museum and from our local guide, the Halifax explosion, uh, largest man-made explosion prior to the atomic bomb that leveled a good part of the city back in uh, 1917, uh, killed about 2000 people as well too. And another part of the uh, tragic, but of course interesting uh, history in Halifax is that the city was incredibly instrumental in the recovery effort from Titanic. Uh, you know, we watch the movies, we've read the books, but being there really brings the story to life and reminds you that these were real people, you know, these were real lives and, you know, people's loved ones that were lost in Titanic. And uh, you see some artifacts off the ship, a deck chair, for example, a cabinet from the stateroom uh, in the Halifax uh, Maritime Museum. And there's a little shot next to Peggy's Cove, just below the Titanic uh, photo there, a Fairview Lawn Cemetery. Um, around 200 victims off of Titanic are buried in a Fairview Lawn Cemetery. And they've actually done the headstones shaped like the bow of a ship and this is a, an interesting fun fact for you and uh, supposedly this is true that when Titanic was finally found I forget what year it was the 80s uh, I do believe uh, the bow of the ship is apparently facing exactly the same direction as the uh, you know the, the bow the way the graves are situated in Fairview Lawn Cemetery so yeah really fascinating and of course we have a chance to visit Fairview Lawn Cemetery and pay our respects and hear some amazing personal stories uh, from our local guide in the cemetery as well. And uh, we are uh, approaching uh, the end here. Just a few more slides to show you. I always worry I won't have enough to say and then I have too much to say. It happens every time. Um, in uh, St. John, New Brunswick, you're looking at uh, the market in the top right hand corner of the screen. That's a lot of fun. And we always make sure our groups have time to, uh, to visit the St. John market. Of course, the reversing falls on the bottom that we talked about earlier. Top left hand corner of the screen, Spring Hill, Nova Scotia. I really like this attraction. Uh, Spring Hill is known for a couple of things. Anne Murray, who's her hometown, the Anne Murray Center is situated there. So if you like, you can take a bit of time over your free time and your lunch break to pop into the uh, Anne Murray uh, Center there. It doesn't take that long to go through it, really. It's uh, not that big. 
Uh, and we do take our group for an included tour of the uh, the Miners Museum at Spring Hill. Um, up top, it's fascinating. Down below, it's amazing. Going into the mine is not for everyone. There are always some people who are just too claustrophobic to go inside of a mine. Uh, but if you're up to it, it is an incredible tour to actually go inside a mine. And it is amazing when they shut the lights off uh, just for a minute, you know, so you can experience it and you can can't see you can't see your fingers in front of your face so it's really fascinating and that's in Spring Hill Nova Scotia okay um we do uh, have a, a, a U.S. Uh, portion on this tour as well too and uh, what you're looking at here in uh, the top of the screen uh, Lake Placid in the top left hand corner, the ferry crossing across Lake Champlain in the top right hand corner, uh, the tram ride up to the top of Cannon Mountain in uh, the White Mountains of New Hampshire. The scenery is stunning. Uh, Lake Placid, an overnight stay in the bottom left-hand corner. And I find that this is typically this area where we get some of the best fall colors of our whole trip. You can never guarantee what you're gonna get and it's different every year, it just depends. But uh, typically I find in the White Mountains is where we get some of our best fall colors on the tour and that can be absolutely spectacular. I love this stop. I never get sick of this. Niagara Falls is amazing. It really is. Uh, we scoot back across uh, onto the Canadian side at that point of the tour. In the top left-hand corner, you're looking at Rainbow Falls. On the right-hand side, you're looking at Horseshoe Falls. And together, collectively, they are Niagara Falls. And it is true, the Canadian side is the more spectacular of the two. It definitely is. Uh, so that is uh, it's Horseshoe Falls. Well, for many years, we had the Maid of the Mist. The Maid of the Mist is actually on the American side now. And what we have <clears throat> is identical. Uh, it's called the Hornblower a Cruise. And that is an incredible experience. You can see the boats uh, in the uh, this, this shot on the right hand side. And we get up close and personal uh, to Niagara Falls. We really do. You see those folks with their uh, blue uh, rain uh, ponchos on. So I always tell my group, if you want to really experience it, be on the top deck right at the front and guaranteed you're going to be wet uh, when you finish. And if you're not up to that, well, you can go in the lower level, kind of in the middle and you won't get wet. But I like it up on the top. Uh, there's some free time in Niagara Falls where you'll have the opportunity to, um, you know, to do the IMAX theater, for example, maybe uh, learn about the age of the daredevils, the people who went over in wooden barrels that actually happened, even a tightrope walker uh, that did Niagara Falls back in the day. So, and we do have a local guide join us in Niagara Falls too. So, so many things to see and do. Um, the Welland Canal, that's amazing. Uh, the Whirlpool Gorge, the Floral Clock, even a little drive out through beautiful Niagara on the lake so it's a really great stop and we spent a couple of nights in Niagara Falls. Okay, we're just about wrapping up here, guys. Uh, we are um, looking at Frankenmuth, Michigan. Uh, this is a fun stop on our way home uh, from the East Coast tour. So as I say, it's just such diverse scenery. We see so many different things uh, on the tour. So you're looking at the Bavarian architecture here in uh, Frankenmuth. Uh, it was uh, settled, pioneered by Germans uh, from the Bavaria region of uh, Germany. So it still uh, maintains its Bavarian architecture today. Uh, you see that shot in the center of the screen there. Um, Frankenmuth is famous having well they say it's the world's largest anyway christmas store and it is absolutely massive i'm i'm even completely exhausted uh visiting the world's largest christmas store so we come out with some serious shopping packages uh there we do uh and then the town is also famous for its amazing uh bavarian traditional chicken dinners as well so oh my gosh i could talk on and on about how good the food is there and I won't for the sake of time, but uh, we have a beautiful meal there as well. And I believe this is uh, just about the end here uh, of our slides. But you know, one thing I love about the all coach tour to the East Coast is we still have amazing sightseeing right up until just about the very end of the tour. Uh, we do a drive through of the city of uh, Chicago. Chicago, that's what you're looking at, um, and I believe that's Adler Planetarium in the foreground, and uh, of course the uh, city skyline 
skyline of uh, Chicago looking out over Lake Michigan. Uh, we uh, do some photo stops there. Uh, but if you see those photos of the uh, boat cruise, that is absolutely beautiful. This is the Wisconsin Dells. So this is on the way home. And uh, yeah, we have an absolutely lovely cruise. We get off at one point and uh, walk into the beautiful scenery and uh, it's really dramatic and, uh, and really lovely. So that's another super fun attraction on the way home from the East Coast tour. So much to say and uh, so many great places to visit on the tour and I'd love to share it with all of you. <laughs> Thanks, Coral. Um, we love hearing from our passengers. So at the end of every tour, our guests are given a survey where they can rate the hotels, attractions, meals, and how the overall tour went so we can continually improve our tours. And so here are past uh, couple reviews from past customers. Annette and Bill said, this tour was awesome beyond our expectations. We were able to cross a few things off our bucket list. We thoroughly enjoyed this tour and highly recommend it. Um, and to the question, did we give you value? Lyndon and Bob answered with yes. It seems like a lot to pay when, um, but then once we get on the tour, they've realized how much was included in the price and uh, they loved every minute of it. The trip was, it was a trip of a lifetime for us. So many sights, sounds and a variety of foods, great hotels and so many attractions to see in Canada. They really enjoyed the New England states with all the fall colors and the guide and driver were excellent and uh, the whole tour met their expectations. So briefly, I'll talk about our uh, commitment to safety. And when the world was turned upside down, Westworld Tours was there for you by ensuring all canceled tours were refunded in full directly back to you. And we want you, our guests, to experience the best. And just as we were there for you in the beginning, Westworld Tours will be there for you once again to welcome you back on board. Our priority at Westworld Tours is to ensure your health and safety while exploring, experiencing, and creating lifelong memories. With your welfare being top of mind, Westworld Tours has enriched our already robust health and safety protocols, giving you that much needed confidence to travel once again. With that being said, uh, we are anticipating we won't be traveling again until everyone is vaccinated. But in the meantime, we are uh, making sure that we have all the protocols in place and doing all the extras to keep everyone safe and uh, we'll be ready to go as soon as we can. So I just wanna thank you all for joining us on this bluster evening, at least it is here where I am. Um, we hope that you have enjoyed this presentation and will join us for our next ones. We have a couple upcoming presentations that we'd love uh, for you guys to join us on. On April 14th at 1 p.m. Saskatchewan time, we'll be uh, talking about the Branson Nashville and Pigeon Forge tours. And we have a special celebrity guest joining us. So you'll have to join us to, uh, to see who that is. And on May 5th uh, at 10 a.m. Saskatchewan time, we will be learning more about our African adventure and we'll be joined by our friends in South Africa. So now, um, again, I just want to thank you guys for joining us this evening, and we will answer some of the questions that you guys had in the chat. Um, if you aren't able to stick around but have a question or would like more information on this tour or any of our other tours, you can visit our website at westworldtours.com or email information at westworldtours.com. Uh, and we will also be sending up a follow-up email in a couple of days that will have the links to both of the tours, the Maritimes All Coach and the Fly Coach Tours. Um, and if you weren't already on our mailing list, uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to join um, in that email as well. And you can find us on Facebook. So we will uh, pop on over here to the questions and I'll see what we have. Okay. So it looks like, um, do we have, um, do the tours have headsets? Um, I'll let Coral answer that. I think some of them vary. Um, not on this tour, we don't. Um, we There are tours where we have had uh, headsets for walking tours. Um, that's primarily more in Europe actually where we've done that, where we actually do more walking tours. Uh, the Maritime Tour specifically, 
Uh, not really necessary to have it. I admit there are a few places where we get off uh, the coach during a uh, local tour where, you know, I, I wish that it was a bit of a different environment. If it's a large group where it can be difficult for everyone to hear, but uh, for the most part, um, it's not too big of an issue with really needing uh, the headset on, um, on the local tours because a lot of the commentary is done in the motor coach, which is actually better, but, uh, but we do have tours sometimes where headsets are used, but that's more primarily trips that we've done in Europe. Perfect. Um, okay, and I think that was, that was really it for the questions. Um, I think you, you gave us a lot of information and hopefully oh, we answered everyone's man? questions. Oh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, we, we, there's a few more questions in there. Oh, okay, so. okay, maybe I missed those. If you can't see them, I can do them. Uh, oh, here they are now. Okay. Um, do we have headsets? Are there USB ports and charging ports on the bus? I can answer that probably, yeah. or, or Carl could. Uh, ahead, this is Dean, by the way, from our from our office. I guess I could turn on my video, seeing as I put on a shirt today and pants. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, pretty much all the, the the modern motor coaches have USB ports and and you're able to charge your various devices uh, um, in Canada. Our, the motor coaches that we use in Canada usually have Wi-Fi, but if we cross into the States, it's kind of like your personal um, cell phone. The, the bus companies have really a, a large expense if they were trying to do the, the Wi-Fi on the coach in the US. So um, if we fly directly into the States and have a US coach, we'll have Wi-Fi on it. If we have a Canadian coach while we're in Canada, there'll be Wi-Fi and we will have charging. And I'll, you can do the rest of the questions. There. Perfect. Uh, okay, there was another question from Delphine. How much is the all coach tour per person? Um, that we can send you um, in an email or you can visit our website. It varies depending on whether you're traveling single, double, triple or quad. Um, so that information is on our website and uh, we can also send you an email with all the details on that. And Barbara asked, what about Newfoundland and Labrador and the Puffins? Mm -hmm. So we do do a lot uh, Newfoundland tour and that one is scheduled for July this year, um, but that one is also done yearly. So uh, we can, you'll find all the information on our website for that tour and uh, we'll hopefully be offering a virtual presentation on that tour um, soon as well. Uh, looks like Diane asks, when will you know who's doing the tour? Um, we don't normally know who the tour director will be until closer to the tour departure um, based on schedules and, uh, you know, all the other tours. We, we, we don't generally know that until a little bit closer to departure. And I think that was all, unless you saw any more, Dean, that I've missed. Oh, I think that's it. We'll maybe just give it a minute or so in sure. case somebody's trying to find the uh, question button to ask a question. Uh, on behalf of myself, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Coral and Leanne once again for doing an awesome job. Um, they, they do a lot of work to uh, make these presentations happen. Uh, and just from my point of view, it's, it's so nice to be talking about traveling. We're not traveling yet. We're all excited to be traveling. Um, I'm looking out my window now. Now it's dark, but I see a whole <laughs> bunch of snow because I'm in Saskatchewan. We have a, a late spring blizzard, but I am ready to travel. I, I, I think everybody else is too from all the comments we get from our uh, past travelers and, and future travelers. And um, mm. We hope to travel with everybody again soon. Um, before we end, before we wind up, I'd like to say a thank you as well too. And I'd like to say that thank you on behalf of uh, my fellow tour directors and guides too, and just tell you how much we have missed you all. We miss traveling with you. And uh, I know all of us as tour directors with Westworld, uh, we miss you and we look forward to traveling with you again. We, we really, really do. And uh, I agree with Dean, I'm so ready to travel. And, uh, uh, but I feel like this is nice, you know, it uh, gives,
this is something to look forward to. And so we appreciate having you here for the virtual presentation. So thank you for joining us this evening, everyone. And it's been my pleasure to share the time with you. Why don't you close us off there, Leanne, and we'll see everybody on the next one. Yes, thank you very much, Coral, for joining and, uh, and uh, taking us through these tours. And thank you, everyone. We will hopefully see you on our next presentation. Right. Have a good evening. Thank <laughs> you.